Stephen's got some business news for us uh, now on the programme. And Argentina has agreed a, a new bailout programme, hasn't it, Stephen, with the IMF? That's right. It's going to be the biggest ever bailout that the IMF has ever issued, in fact. Argentina is to receive an extra $7 billion on top of the $50 billion that it agreed in June as the country battles a currency crisis that's seen the peso lose half of its value so far this year. Now, under the revised agreement, the IMF is front-loading payments to Argentina, with $13 billion coming before the end of this year. But Argentina will need to raise taxes and cut spending further and make important changes to how it controls its currency. Brian Quinn has the details. A bigger lifeline for Buenos Aires. The Argentine government has secured a revised bailout deal with the International Monetary Fund in a bid to restore investor confidence in the country. The fund remains fully committed to helping Argentina tackle the challenges that it faces. It is the largest ever program that the IMF is putting together. The deal is an update to one previously agreed in June. Under the new terms, Argentina's three-year IMF credit line is boosted from $50 billion to just over $57 billion. Funding is now front-loaded, with an additional $19 billion available during 2018 and 2019. And the resources are available for use, not simply precautionary. It's all intended to reassure investors who have been pulling money out of the country, fearful that Argentina would be unable to pay its debt in 2019. The exodus of cash has sent the peso's value tumbling some 50 percent over 2018. On Tuesday, the country's central bank chief resigned after less than four months on the job. One key requirement of the IMF deal for his successor is to stop intervening on currency exchange markets and instead focus on limiting money supply. We believe this new monetary policy will allow us to reduce inflation and recover the stability and predictability of prices that Argentina so badly needs. The government is pushing through an austerity budget to bring down Argentina's deficit with strict cuts to public spending and export tax hikes. Those measures have sparked massive street protests and strikes over recent days. But with the IMF seeking a budget surplus in 2020, there's likely more austerity to come. Federal Reserve is planning to push ahead with interest rate rises despite the trade war with China. America's central bank upgraded its economic forecast for this year to 3.1 percent, seeing that growth slowing to 2.5 percent in 2019. The Fed raised interest rates as had been expected by a quarter of a point to between 2 and 2 and a quarter percent. That's the benchmark federal funds rate. It's the third rate rise this year. And there were hints from Fed Governor Jerome Powell that another could be on the way in 2018. But this coming, as you can see, after a long period of low interest rates in the United States. Now, despite the fears that the effect the trade disputes could have on the US economy, Fed Governor Jerome Powell said they weren't evident yet. Um, I think if you look at the aggregate perform the performance of the US economy at an aggregate at a national level, it's hard to see much happening at this point. And or you, you can look at it the other way. You can ask if, if all of the tariffs that have been announced are applied, what would be the effect at the aggregate level? And they're still relatively small. Well, there's not much for the markets to chew over from what the Federal Reserve was saying as we got pretty much what we were expecting. Let's take a look at the opening picture in Europe today. Down across the board, as you can see, we're keeping a close eye today on the Italian markets. That's after reports that there could be a delay to the government announcing its budget there which may affect, of course, the fears around Italy's uh, finances, which, of course, are one of the concern spots in Europe. Bank shares among the ones trading down uh, in Italy today. On the Asian markets, we'd falls across most Asian markets today as well. The Cosby, though, back in business after its day off. And the Nikkei in Tokyo up today in trading too. The Cosby up seven-tenths of one percent. On the currency markets, the dollar up against the euro. Uh, so one euro trading for one dollar and 17 cents and 89 pence sterling. Next, Uber is to pay $148 million to settle legal action over hiding a data breach at the company in 2016. In November of last year, the ride-hailing firm paid $100,000 to hackers to conceal the theft of names, addresses and phone numbers of some 57 million of its users and drivers. The company subsequently fired two executives it deemed responsible for the cover-up. This deal will settle the case in all U.S. states. And finally for me, McDonald's in the United States is trying to win over new customers by taking more artificial ingredients 
out of its products. The fast food chain says its burgers are now among the items that are free from artificial preservatives and flavours. The company says the changes have helped already to boost sales. One of the changes is with the cheese, which is now free of artificial colours. It still looks the same, though. And apparently finding natural pickles is a big problem for McDonald's. They can't find ones that taste the same without the preservatives in them. And apparently experts, and I don't know how you become a pickle expert, say it's going to take two years to find a pickle that's naturally produced but tastes the same. OK, just one pickle. Just or, one. <laughs> I think they need few more than one. I think McDonald's sell enough burgers for that. Thanks, Stephen. Stephen with Business Off for Arts 24.